Hmm. All right. Up, yo. Hi. Howdy. I'm gonna uh, make you a co-host, and we can uh, bring all 97 and up members in as panelists. Okie dokie. Poof, you're a co-host. Oh, we already got a question in the Q&A. Good afternoon, Michael. Well, I want to know something. Yeah? I want to know, what are you thinking and working on right now? No, oh, that's what we're going to talk about for the next hour. Funny you should ask. I take the softball the softballs that life gives me. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a second. Howdy, Donna. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right. Thanks for your email this morning. Oh, you got it. It was it was perfect. Yeah, I already replied to it too. Yeah, because Ooh. you're all caught up. Because I have no client work to do. My month end is done. <laughs> and I'm well, that's all one of us. I'm never caught up, but yeah, <laughs> I can reply. That email got the most replies I've ever gotten. Did it? Okay, right. And it's so funny because I was writing that email after I had done the seven hours. We were sitting on the couch and my husband put on that Tetris movie. And I'm like, oh, I got to get that email out. I didn't even write it yet. And I go, I'm just going to brain dump. And <laughs> that was literally a brain dump. <laughs> And that got the biggest replies ever. Nice. All right, we'll give it a few more minutes for people to join. And then we'll get this party started, as I say. So while we're waiting, um, you know, whenever I... Uh, put together one of these webinars, I have it as a standard question, like in my default settings in Zoom, that um, you're given an option to answer, to ask me a question and I'll answer it live during the, the webinar. Usually it gets ignored, but this time we had quite a few people actually use it and ask questions. So we're gonna start the hour off by going through some of those questions and I'll, I'll kind of do the best I can giving quick answers to each of them and then if anything by the end of the hour if you're not already clear you'll probably be clear on where you can go to take advantage of resources where you can get you know more detailed answers to these questions so uh, the only caveat is if you registered like within the last hour and asked a question it may not be included because i had the slides all made up this morning earlier than that <laughs> And if you are in here as an attendee and you are a member of 97 and up and we've missed letting you in as a panelist, just let us know in the chat. We're kind of going off memory here, doing the best we can, trying to figure well, out who's. I always try to pull up in Slack to yeah. see if they're in there. And that worked, except for I wasn't letting anybody in because I was in my own Slack space and so uh, in my Slack space. All right. I, no, I know that that person's there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. If you click into the general channel and click on that list of people in that channel, that one channel for sure has everybody in it. Yep. Somebody's got their uh, Fireflies note taker app 
in here. I saw another one of those recently um, that somebody was using. It was actually, uh, it was called Fathom, but nothing to do with the KPI app that we all know about. Totally different company. That, that's what I, I actually just disconnected it this morning just because I wasn't utilizing it. Fathom, is, it's pretty slick. Yeah, from what, uh, I can't remember who it was that was sharing with me about it, but I was in a Zoom with them and I, I said, oh, it was Sarah Prevost. She is, and she was telling me how amazing it is. What do we always say? It works if you were if you work it. And I yeah. wasn't working it. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. All right, one more minute, and then we'll get started. 8 p.m. in Ireland, huh? Oh, yeah, Peter. Peter's with us. Yeah, feel free to chime in in the chat. Let us know, like, what part of the world you're in. We did the webinar last week for Lysio, the um, like time saving hacks that I did. And um, with, uh, you know, it was a whole panel of us. It was uh, Kelly, Liz, uh, Sherelle, and Kate Johnson, and Allison, of course, moderated it. But uh, the chat was going crazy with people from all over the place, letting us know where they were. It was interesting to see. Oh, um, Linda is mentioning that chat is disabled. So, oh, yeah, we're not going to be able to. I can fix that. Uh, attendees can chat with everyone. Done. So it should work now. Let us know if it doesn't. There it is. That's why Michael used the Q&A to say hi. Now I understand. Look at that. <laughs> it's perfect. It's blowing up. I love it. Myrtle Beach. Hello from Pa. Where's Ma? <laughs> Sorry. Doug's in Tennessee, too. Nice. You guys should do a meetup. All right, let's get started because I have actually a lot to cover and not a whole lot of time to cover it in. So like I said, I want to start off by um, answering some questions that were asked by people during the registration process. So the first question is from Doug L. What is the best way to train to be a CFO for a mid-sized business? Well, Bulletproof CFO, of course. Um, Joking aside, I think, uh, you know, and this is something I've learned actually from developing and creating and implementing that program and then soliciting feedback from the people who have signed up. And I'll be honest, when I created that program originally, I my whole focus was on forecasts because I feel like that should be at the very center of anything that you do as a CFO. Any kind of strategic guidance or advice you're going to give uh, can likely be built and centered around that kind of an analysis, doing the forecast. Of course, that means the books have to be bulletproof first because the forecast is useless if the data that it's based on aren't reliable, right? So, um, you know, but then what I was encouraged to consider, and one of the things I, I'm not actually including in today's outline, but I'll mention it since it's all about, you know, changes I'm making to upcoming programs is I have actually written a whole new curriculum for that program um, I just haven't, I can't tell you exactly when and I'm going to even start working on it, let alone have it done. And the reason is, going back to this question, is because I, I realized from getting feedback from people who are in the Bulletproof CFO program that, you know, of course, it does go much wider than just forecasts. There's all different kinds of things CFOs can do, trying to line up financing. You know, of course, some of the analysis you'll get out of forecasting might be, for example, if a company's got a lot of debt, and you start looking at, like I recently had a client where they had a ton of uh, finance leases, which used to be called uh, capital leases, right? <clears throat> where typically you don't get a stated interest rate, but there's definitely an imputed one. And so I started going through the information that I had about all their leases to back into what the effective interest rate was. And, you know, looking at that and seeing the whole picture, and this company had a ton of leases because they just, it's post-production company and they lease a lot of equipment that they use to, to perform that. And I, you know, started putting together this analysis to look at what these rates are. And then the next step will be to see, can we secure a line of credit for like a million dollars and pay off all these leases to take advantage of a better rate, even at, 
even with the rates increasing as they have, it would have been a deal over what these guys were paying when I calculated their effective interest rate. So it's those kinds of things that we want to think about. And then, so going back to the best way to train, it's thinking about the kind of stuff that you would want to do as a fractional CFO. Uh, I'm assuming we're talking fractional here and not full-time employed, um, but think about the services you'd want to offer and then start pinging the web and looking for those kind of resources that will train you on how to do that, right? But it's really, and I recently put out a video, uh, I called it something like, you know, a KPI you can really use. And it was really based on doing a very simple analysis that anybody here I'm sure could very easily do. I've, I, my video gives you the blueprint for how you can basically download the reports you need from QuickBooks Online to get the revenue numbers, let's say monthly, alongside the um, advertising and marketing spend and you put that on a chart to see if you can establish a pattern as in, hey, we spike the advertising spend and we see a related uh, spike in revenues within a consistent time frame after that. Then you ask the questions, all right, what did you do here? Because clearly it did something to the revenue, something you did worked. Let's find out what that is so we can figure out what to do more of, right? Right away there is strategic analysis that you can do. You're all qualified and capable easily for a client. So Really, before I can answer the best way to train, I, I need to ask you, what exactly are you proposing to do for these clients? Because under the heading of fractional CFO, it could go very wide and go a lot of ways. And aside from my Bulletproof CFO, I do have videos. Um, they're a little dated, probably due for an update now on how to put together your cash flow forecast, because I still believe that that you know, should be the core of everything that you would do for a company as a fractional CFO. So. That's my two cents or 10 cents worth on that. Next one, what are some good resources for nonprofit accounting? So we have, uh, Linda is here. Uh, uh, wait, is she? No, I thought she was. Hold on. We have two experts, uh, probably more than that, but two that I'm aware of because they're very vocal, um, who are experts in nonprofits in our 97 and Up program. There's Amy McLowry, who I think I did see here. And then there's Linda Swick. So. I, uh, I would refer you to either one of them for information on resources. I've pinged them in our 97up Slack workspace. We have a nonprofit channel to ask them to get back to me with resources. They haven't had a chance to reply yet. I only ping them on like Saturday. So um, as soon as I have answers, you know, just follow up with me, stay with me online, and I will be happy to get back to you with uh, any resources that they can share. How to fight imposter syndrome and raise your prices. So my first quick and simple answer to that is just do it. Next new client that comes in the door, just ask for more money than you have been asking for. My experience with that is as soon as you do that and you see how quickly somebody agrees to it, you know, as in they don't even question it, that in itself is what I found will boost your own confidence because you'll just realize that clearly it's valued at that newer, higher level. If anything, you'll start wishing you had asked for even more money when you see how quickly prospects will agree to, you know, more money than you've ever asked for in the past. That's really the best way. It's a very kind of organic answer, but it's, that's going to be the best way. And, you know, like I said, so you just do it. You just ask for the money, leave your existing clients alone. You don't want to risk upsetting a client and losing them over wanting to increase their fees. So first build the confidence by asking for higher prices on new clients coming in the door. As your confidence builds there, and especially as you take on more and more new clients at higher rates, you'll have the sort of leverage you need to feel comfortable going back to your existing clients eventually and saying, hey, I've never increased your prices before. It's time. You know, I really want to continue giving you great service and giving you all the attention you deserve. In order to justify doing that, I need to increase the fees starting, you know, whenever you decide you're going to start doing that with them. And, and one quick side note on that. A lot of people, I know it's kind of the normal thinking to wait until the end of the year and do it going into a new year, but there's no reason to wait, especially if you've never increased their prices before. And it's been at least a year since you started working with them. No reason whatsoever to wait. You can do it anytime. You can go to reach out to them today and say, I think it's time for an increase. And assuming they agree, you just establish when the increase will be effective. Usually you would do it just to keep things clean like next month, right? So... That's uh, my two cents or 10 cents worth on that. How to leverage AI for bookkeepers. So the first thing I would say is if you haven't already, start getting in and playing with chat GPT, right? And there's a lot of resources already out there. Uh, if you just do some searches online and social media, I've written an article uh, on it. I've got another one that I'm gonna be working on with Intuit. Um, 
you know, call it, I haven't come up officially with the title yet, but it's going to be something like use chat GPT like a CFO, because a lot of the content I've seen on it so far focuses on having it help you write correspondence, which is great, but there's so much more I think we can do with it than that. So uh, I'm going to be, you know, stay close to my blog. You know, you'll see a little later on this morning or this afternoon, I should say, um, where that is, if you don't already know, because that's where you're going to see me producing articles about this and lots of other things going forward. So, uh, you know, that's the best thing to do is start playing with it and learning how to use it and how it works. And then you'll just you'll start getting ideas the more you play with it. Right. Like one day I said, you know, uh, and I I talked about this a lot in uh, 97 and up recently. But I was sitting there going, what are the kinds of things that sort of frustrate me that maybe chat GPT can help with? And one thing that comes up sort of classically is I'm keeping the books for a client. And, you know, what's the standard procedure after the year is closed? Uh, eventually, we get the books ready, we turn it over to the CPA or enrolled agent, whoever's going to do the taxes. And they give me that year end depreciation entry, among other things. And they're using in most, if not all cases, the maker's uh, method of depreciation, which is modified accelerated cost recovery system. And so the thing is, if I want to keep good, like gap basis financials where everything's matched up in the right period, booking the whole year's depreciation in the final month of the year kind of skews things, doesn't it? So I asked ChatGPT to create a maker's depreciation schedule for me, and I gave it the criteria for the asset type and life and so on. And it did it. And we went back and forth a little bit. It wasn't 100% accurate, but we were able to, by playing with it and interacting with it more, we were able to get it pretty close to being just about spot on in terms of its answers. So, and keep that in mind as you're playing with this stuff that, you know, it's not perfect. It's, it's being developed literally as we speak every single day, all day, they're constantly updating it. And so uh, it's going to take some time. Don't expect it to be perfect. Don't assume it's accurate. You know, check it on any answers that it gives you. But that's probably the best way to start getting used to it. And the correspondence one is great. I, I actually had it prepare a very simple service agreement, a referral agreement for me over the weekend that I'm going to use. So uh, even for legal stuff, again, ultimately, you want to make sure you talk to a lawyer about these things. But for really simple stuff like what, what I needed, you know, it probably saved me the 350 bucks or so I'd spend on having an attorney prepare it. And it's a simple enough uh, agreement and use case that I'm, I'm not worried about it, right? Um, what keeps me, what helps me to keep hopeful and inspired? It's a good question. Um, I think gratitude is probably the most important thing is, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, if time allows, I'm going to show you something later today that um, I have in terms of how I do my journaling these days. And one of the questions that I answer every day in that in my journal process is, um, you know, I, I write out what am I grateful for, right? And doing that every single day, actually writing it out. So I'm thinking about not just thinking about it, but actually p concretely putting it in front of me as the reminder. That really helps. That goes a long way. And then just constantly learning for me is what keeps me inspired. Reading all different kinds of things. I don't. I. I, I don't read necessarily just stuff about accounting. I read. I go much much wider than that. And it's amazing how sometimes I can be reading something totally unrelated to business, totally unrelated to anything I'm doing career-wise, and yet I'll take inspiration out of something like that that I'm reading, and I'll be able to immediately draw a connection that I can, where I can bring it right into what I am doing professionally. So, so ideas and inspiration can come from anywhere. Diversify yourself, right? Most mornings, I spend the, the first hour of my day with my dogs. Like I call them the mighty goddesses. And oftentimes while I'm you know, relaxing and laying with them in a, on my sofa, I'm scrolling my Instagram feed. And it's not the typical Instagram feed probably that most of you, you know, see if you're, if you're on Instagram and you do this kind of thing. Mine is flooded with videos of like animals, you know, and just sort of cuteness and, you know, and some of them doing really funny things and some of them just, you know, it's just animals are amazing to me. And they actually provide me with a lot of inspiration, just seeing them and how sort of pure of heart they are. Uh, that keeps me very much inspired. And, and then just always having something to look forward to, always making sure that I'm working on something that's exciting. One of the things we discussed in that panel I made reference to last week was, you know, a lot of people have this philosophy, you've probably all read articles about, you know, what's uh, a term that's used um, that's called swallow the frog, right? And it refers to that you should do the big, hairy, audacious, hard thing first thing every day, like get that out of the way so that the rest of the day feels easy. Well, my philosophy about this has actually flipped to the opposite. I start every day, as I mentioned, doing something inspiring, doing something that I really enjoy and look forward to, which is kind of snuggling with my little puppies 
the first hour of every day before I do any work, before I do anything serious. And then even when it comes to work, most recently, I was guided to do this and I was inclined to anyway, which is to uh, start my day off doing something creative, doing something that encourages me to think you know, and something that's fun that I enjoy doing. For me, that means content, which is really what we're all here to talk about. You know, this whole hour today is what I'm going to be doing there. Um, so those are some ideas, hopefully that helps spark some ideas for you in terms of what keeps me inspired and hopeful. Um, let's see, now we have a more technical question. An owner with multiple companies wants to move an intercompany loan from one to another without cash moving, how to process. I mean, the simplest way I can explain without doing a whole screen share and tutorial on this is that if I'm taking a loan off of one company's books and moving it to another, that in itself becomes a loan between them, right? I'm basically moving debt from one company to the other. So look at it like this. If I have my company, Nerd Enterprises, and Greg has his company, The Numbers Guy, and let's say I owe somebody money and somehow I transfer that loan to Greg. So now Greg's going to pay that guy off. Well, now Greg has in effect loaned me that money, right? So if you're going to move a loan around without cash moving, you're doing just that. You're just, you're still going to have a loan. It's just going to be with someone else, right? So without more specific or concrete information, that's the best I can, you know, give you under the circumstances. I hope that helps. What is the next Bulletproof bookkeeping program I'm coming out with and when? So that's what we're going to talk about the rest of this hour. So I'm going to gloss past this one for now, because by the time we're done here, you're going to see uh, very detailed answers to that very question. Uh, did I start integrating chat GPT with any workflow tools? And if so, which ones? What are some best use cases for our industries? So I am, you know, Notion has Notion AI, which is their integration with chat GPT. That's where I'm without going on to chat GPT directly. That's where I'm starting to use it. In fact, that's where I've been playing with having it create, you know, like uh, makers depreciation schedules, loan amortization schedules. I've played with having it do. And those have been integrated into uh, pages in Notion because these are pages that I'm using as like work papers to support calculations based on work that I'm doing for clients. So I love Notion for that use case, especially it's the perfect use case for like digital work papers and the chat GPT integration. Again, it's called Notion AI and Notion is a, a great place to start playing around with using that to help aid in any calculations that you're doing. Again, you know, like I said earlier, check the work, make sure, you know, don't assume it's accurate. Uh, many times it's not, but you can also get it to correct its own errors by pointing them out. And it's great that way. Peter says, I've been using Zero for a few years now. In my opinion, it's less fussy, less bells and whistles, and loads quicker than QBO. Any of you? I mean, I made a choice a long time ago to go all in with QuickBooks Online. Ultimately, the deal breaker for me with Zero was in its reporting. I felt and still feel its reporting is very lacking. And uh, to me, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. The whole reason I spend time and money and energy putting data into a bookkeeping system is because I want to get really good data out of that system goes back to what I talked about right at the beginning in terms of CFO services, where I want to be able to get good data so I can analyze and report and make decisions. And, you know, that's where you know, I felt zero was was lacking, uh, especially years ago, I did a side by side comparison of the two. And uh, I, I literally, I really tried to be fair and said, here's zero's bank fees, here's QBO's bank fees, they look different, they work a little different, but I'd say they're about equal in terms of, you know, one being better than the other. And I went down the line with a bunch of comparisons that I did. And in the end, when I got to re the reporting, that was one uh, thing that swayed me towards QBO. The other thing, which I, I know they've corrected since this, but at that time, their quote unquote balance per bank was not pulling from the bank's API. It was calculated. And I, I showed in that video that I did how you could actually fudge it, which as I pointed out in that video, created creates an audit nightmare in terms of, I can't really rely on that number because it can be changed by a user and that should never have been allowed. So, and again, that was a long, long time ago. So, um, you know, I know they've changed that by now. I know they've fixed that issue, but for me then it was a big one. Uh, purchase your e-commerce course. What's the best way to get help troubleshooting? We've got a community that goes along with the e-commerce course. Um, uh, if you were there at the launch, then you had it included. I think now I forget what it is. I forget if it's $27 a month or something. Um, I'm considering, I haven't decided for sure, but I'm considering just including it with the course. But my feeling at the time that I decided to charge a subscription for it was that with the other communities that I've had associated with other courses, 
I do invest a lot of time and energy into supporting them and answering people's questions and making sure that I get back quickly and timely. And I felt that it was, um, you know, it was, uh, I'm happy to do it. It's a pleasure, but it does eat up my resources. And so I felt it was justified to charge something for it. And, and this way people could pay for it when they need it and cancel when they don't and just kind of jump in and out whenever you feel you need. So, but that's the best way is get into the e-commerce community that we have along with the course and ask your questions there. It's been a little quiet in there lately. It was very active at first when we first launched the course. So bottom line, as long as it's quiet, you're very likely to get attention very quickly when you go in there and ask a question. Uh, I'd like more detailed info on onboarding a client, the conversations to be had, the paperwork to gather, a possible checklist. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some that there's stuff in my roadmap that I'm going to talk about that will address how I'm going to be creating resources along those exact lines. Uh, what did I use to get your name in the middle of the weekly email? So any email program that you use, whether it's MailChimp or Constant Contact, mine is all done with Kajabi. My whole site's in Kajabi. The emails are produced in Kajabi. And all of these programs give the ability to use merge tags because it has your name in the database and the list of names. And so that's the same way that I include your name in the greeting where it says, you know, hey, so-and-so, it's me, Seth. Um, I just put that in the middle of the email as well. I, I don't do it often because it's one of those things where if you do it all the time, it sort of loses its effectiveness. But once in a while I do it. And obviously, Elisa just proved the point that it is effective in getting somebody's attention and making it feel personal. Bulletproof bookkeeping for individual realtors course coming. So we have the Bulletproof bookkeeping for real estate brokers course. Um, as part of what I'm going to be discussing the rest of the hour, I'm going to be launching a module in that same course included in the original course, specifically for real estate agents. And there's some cleanup that I want to do on the original course, some things I think I could do better in terms of uh, bringing more clarity to the information that's being taught. So I'm not sure if by individual realtors, you're looking for a more scaled down version of the course. Somebody, it may have even been Brent here, it may have been somebody else. I recall getting a question last week from somebody that, you know, the real estate broker course that I have looks very robust and they're just an individual realtor. And, you know, is there something more scaled down? I thought about it and the reality is scaled down or scaled up, the lessons in that course walk you through what you need to know in order to know how to get the accounting right. I'm not sure that it makes a difference, you know, because you're working with a smaller firm. Um, because again, ultimately, you just have to get the accounting flow down in terms of how to, you know, grab the gross commission, <laughs> excuse me, how to deal with everything that reconciles that to the net amount that you receive from the title company, and then dealing with all the payouts and where and when those happen. It's all the same process, whether you it's just you or you have a team of 100 people, right? Um, so I, I don't envision a separate course uh, that's smaller. Um, you know, it's if anything, I would say, you know, sign up for this course, I think it's going to be exactly what you need. Uh, will I be completing the content for the e-commerce course? If so, when? The e-commerce course is just about complete. There's like a handful of lessons, many of which are appendices, you know, which are sort of add-ons to the course um, that I haven't actually produced yet, but it's pretty much all there. I, at this point, I am trying to roll out one new lesson a week until it's truly final. But um, if you sign up for the course today, guaranteed everything you need to know about how to run uh, accounting for an e-commerce company is already there and published. If anything, there's some, you know, I, I just rolled out the uh, lesson on how to use SASANT to import uh, Shopify transactions. And then I did uh, Stripe, I believe, and I'm coming out with PayPal or it's the other way around. These are all extra things, as I explained in the very lessons themselves. You're not going to use this as your normal method for getting the bookkeeping done but it's an important tool to have in your toolbox uh, for many reasons. One, to teach you the real, the real deep foundational understanding that I think everybody should have about how that information needs to flow from the sales channel into QuickBooks Online in the appropriate places. And, and then of course it's there in case you need it in a pinch because let's say something's going wrong with your sales channel or whatever app you're using to bring in the sales and you need to hurry up and get the transactions in. You can't wait for support to fix whatever issue you're having. So it gives you the ability to carve out the report that you'll need from the particular sales channel, map it with SASANT and push the data in. And then of course you have to be extra careful when you do that uh, about creating duplicates once the app that you're using does get fixed and things can once again be brought in. So again, it's more these lessons that I'm talking about now that, that are just getting rolled out or recently got rolled out. 
They're not about what you would need to do in order to perform the task of e-commerce accounting. They're, again, extra tools in your arsenal that I'm giving you so you have every resource you could possibly need in order to get the job done without being held back by anything. Uh, with the dollar losing ground to China and Brazil, what is my strategy for preserving wealth? So you may or may not love my answer to this question, but the simple answer is, and it was kind of the same thing that I had for people when the pandemic hit and everybody was worried about, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to make money. I'm gonna lose all my clients. And I, this is, the simple answer is anytime we're faced with any kind of inflationary situation, the only solution is to hoard cash. <laughs> that really is the bottom line. I just need to hoard cash and save as much as I can so that I have more buying power, especially considering that that cash I'm hoarding is losing value, right? And understand that this isn't permanent. You know, this thing goes up and down. For a while there, our dollar was way stronger than any other currency in the world. And it was actually crushing some foreign economies because some of these foreign countries had invested heavily in debt in our country and with interest rates rising up, causes the prices of those bonds to go down and it was killing some of these other countries. So bottom line, you know, uh, just hoard cash and put it somewhere that you trust, you know, as best as you can, given what happened with, you know, Silicon Valley. Uh, the bottom line and the good news there is I don't think anybody, I think everybody involved or who affected by that has gotten every single dollar back. You know, it was all covered ultimately. Uh, let's see, questions on locations and classes. Can I take locations out with Sasan and leave classes? Need to get rid of client as no happiness, okay? So I'm not aware that you can use SASANT to pull out a specific piece of a transaction. You can use it to delete transactions. You can use it to import transactions. You can delete and import list items, but I don't think you can say, just pull the classes out of all these transactions. Unfortunately, that's something that's gonna have to be done manually, if anything. Uh, and if it's really critical and it's that big of a mess, then uh, oftentimes what I suggest is start a new QBO company and reconstruct the accounting and charge accordingly. Uh, and it looks like that is it for our questions here. Um, so let me just check the chat. I see some stuff going through here. Uh, which of my courses do I recommend that covers both CFO and bookkeeping fundamentals? I don't have one program that covers both. They're so far apart from each other, but I'll go over what I do have that covers each of those areas. Um, all right, and it looks like that's it. So what is happening? First of all, I hope everybody's doing great. We obviously just finished the first quarter of the year. I hope you've had a good first quarter. I know that for our tax preparing professionals, this season has been brutal and probably will continue to be. Um, it has for the last few years now been brutal, especially with the constant changes and things that you have to keep up with, you know, and then you have to keep up with getting clients to give you what you need, which is a task in itself. So, uh, you know, if you're doing it and you're sticking it out, congratulations, you should give yourself a pat on the back because this is not easy. And this, this whole industry is facing some big problems because nobody wants to join it because they know how brutal it is. And there's a lot easier ways to make really good money, you know, without having to trade our time for cash as we have to do. It's the basic nature of the profession we've chosen, right? There are ways to scale. And that's some of the stuff I'm going to be working on with people over the rest of the year and going forward and to as much as possible, create programs that may not exactly fall into the definition of passive income, but you know, get us closer and closer to that kind of a business model. Because in my experience, that's the only way you're really going to be able to scale and experience the sort of peace of mind that comes with not having to constantly grind and work 80 hours a week just to keep up with everything, right? Um, so at this point, I have made the decision uh, really just this weekend that I'm no longer taking on accounting services clients. Um, I had, frankly, two bad experiences back to back that just made me ask myself, why am I doing this? I have so much better of an opportunity to use the extra free time by not having to work on these clients to focus on what I'm doing for pretty much all of you who are attending here today, which is producing content, creating the educational resources that I love to create, that hopefully you love to take advantage of. And that's my goal for the rest of my career, which I expect will be, I don't know, maybe another 10 years. I'm 52 by 62. Maybe I'll retire. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll be writing books. I have no idea that far out. I just know that right now, all I want to do is produce content. And so I'm not taking on any more clients. Uh, so I'm all in all the time now with content creation and the educational platform. And, you know, to that end, I am actually implementing a referral program exclusive to members of 97 and up. Michael says we're not letting Seth retire. 
Um, so what I'm doing is I've, I've queried my 97 and up family in Slack uh, to let me know exactly which industries they'd like to serve. I'm putting together a database because obviously the inquiries are going to continue to come in from business owners who see my videos on YouTube and whatnot. And I want to be able to have a resource that I can trust of people I can trust that I can say, hey, if you're in the real estate industry, then I'm going to refer you to this or these experts from my network of accounting pros, right? So, you know, a little shameless plug slash side note, another benefit to joining 97 and up is that you can take advantage of being in that referral network. Um, because these are the people I'm in touch with every single week. And I know their commitment to the craft. And these are the ones I'm frankly most comfortable referring to. So while I'm at it, Let's look at what I'm currently doing in 97 and up. And uh, I'll give you a quick little sneak preview on this. Uh, or at the beginning of this year, I created this like homepage for 97 and up in Notion. Anybody who's in 97 and up has gotten used to my Notion ways, right? So this is cool because this gives the uh, information for how to join the meetings. I just revealed on the recording the meeting info, but that's okay. I can change it if I need to. Uh, and this way everybody just bookmarks this page and they have links to the meeting info. We do the calls every Tuesday and Thursday. This takes you to the 97 Up website where all the courses you have access to as a member are included. And there are many courses that are included with membership. Uh, we, I had David, my graphic design guy, create this beautiful uh, suggestion box form. So, you know, I have a curriculum of topics that we cover on these calls, but of course I open it up for members to request so that this way you drive the content. You tell me, here's what I need to learn more about and boom, I'll get it on the schedule and we'll get it covered. And all the calls, of course, are recorded and cataloged uh, also right here. Right now I've got this view that shows you the published calls broken down by major category. So I have a category on anything we do covering apps. I put a little less emphasis on apps because I get feedback from our members and they've told me there's too much emphasis on apps and not enough on the more technical accounting stuff. So that's what I've started to focus on. But obviously, if somebody says, hey, we need more Notion content or ClickUp content, I'm going to get it on the schedule, right? Here's some practice management stuff. Here I've started to really build out you know, calls, and this is the best I can cover in a one-hour call on accounting for startups. Here's brokers and agents, property flippers and investors, and so on. So these are, you know, and then we have open calls, and I've built a lot more open calls into our curriculum on purpose this year because I have found and I've seen the people commenting in Slack that these are some of the best calls because it's wide open. You can bring whatever questions you have. And it's often just really good kind of stimulating conversations. And now I'm having uh, Mary, who works with me as my assistant, go through these and start to, uh, you know, kind of uh, log sort of an index of what topics are discussed at what timestamp within these calls. So that as you click into the call notes here in Notion, you can, you know, get a sense of that. I don't know if she's gotten to this one yet. Um, although this one, as you can see, has pretty good notes in it. I think that was me, actually. Um, you know, so again, I try to be as detailed as I can. And, um, you know, this is this is a, a big part of what everybody gets in 97 and up. Another thing I started doing, which there it is, the 97 and up book club. Now, this isn't your typical book club where we like read a book and discuss it. We tried that. It wasn't that effective. You know, there'd be a handful of people who were ready to or willing to read that book at that time. And the rest were just like, it's not for me right now. So what we do here is it's more like show and tell. You come and talk about whatever books you're reading or studying and why you love them and why you think they're great. And we're starting to build a library of kind of notes that I take of each of the books that we've discussed. And of course, I open it up and invite everybody who wants to to uh, contribute their own notes. And I've got it broken down by chapters, right? So here, chapter two of Think and Grow Rich, these are my notes that I, I've taken. I recently started going through this again and started taking notes. So that's the book club. Uh, I showed you the industry specific calls, the request form. Uh, and then I mentioned there's a lot of courses included. And I also offer discounts to members of 97 and up on pretty much every course I ever put out there. So in short, as I mentioned, I get the feedback from our members to find out what they want. And then I put the program together for you with my galactic superpowers for getting things uh, organized, right? Um, Let's talk about updates to the website. Uh, there have been many of these lately, uh, even as recent as this weekend. So when you get onto my website, none of you are going to be interested in accounting services. And this is about to change completely anyway, because it's pretty much all going away. 
I'm going to offer an option for people to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I promise you it's going to be priced so high. Very few people are going to ever want to pay me for one-on-one. -on -one, and that's on purpose because I don't want to really do one-on-one -on -one unless somebody's willing to pay a lot of money for it. My time is much better spent creating resources that can reach many people at once rather than an hour for one-on-one. -on -one, right? Courses and training. So this is a course where you can go to see all the courses that are currently available. There's Bulletproof CFO. So that's the course that's going to teach you how to offer the CFO services. And as you scroll down here, it's organized by section. So if you look up at the top here, you can click any one of these topics and it will take you straight down to that part. Um, and I even have templates and checklists here. So you can go through this and see what we have available right now. The Guide to the Galaxy platform is what I launched this year. It's kind of, it's it's not just my blog, it's a, it's a slew of resources. And so we just kind of updated this menu so that you can really see everything that's included. There's the blog, there's the podcast, and we have the community. Now I had done the community in Discord going into the year and I found it's a bit of a ghost town. And I also recently found that I, um, Kajabi has its own built-in community platform that years ago when I looked at it, it was terrible, but they bought a company called Vibly and they've integrated that as their community platform. And it's much, much better. It's not as robust necessarily as a Slack or Discord, but what I love about it and the reason why I'm just going to go all in with it at this point is besides the fact that my Guide to the Galaxy public Discord community is a ghost town, this is... Um, it's integrated. So when you log into my website, you have access to your courses, you have access to the community. It's all in one place. It's all one login. It simplifies it for all of you, which is really what I want. Instead of having to think, what's my Slack login? What's my Discord login? It's just central one place for everything. And so I'm going to start moving the uh, course related communities over into this platform as well. The only one I won't touch because they'll kill me is 97 and up. That one as far as I can tell, is going to remain in Slack. We also have years and years and years of good content in there because I pay for that uh, workspace. So I would hate to lose that by switching. So 97 and up, for better or worse, is stuck with Slack. But all the other course-related communities that I've got, I'm probably going to move over to this platform sooner or later. Uh, do I have a course on marketing? I have several. So if I go back to courses and training, where you'll find those is under process and workflow design. And... I'll show you exactly what I've got along these lines. So there's this, if you were inclined to start using Kajabi as your backend for your site, even if you don't plan on doing courses, this course shows you A, where there's a good use case for everyone to produce at least one course as kind of like a lead magnet for people to opt into your list so you can communicate with them and reach out and offer them whatever you're offering. So even if you're not gonna do courses, I would still recommend checking this out and considering switching to Kajabi, most of you are probably using WordPress for your site. And then with WordPress, you need MailChimp or Constant Contact or one of those other email tools. And with Kajabi, it's all completely integrated. And if you do offer courses like me, one of the big benefits of that is I have all the data that I need. If I wanted to send an email out uh, that anybody who's already in a course isn't going to care about because it's really about you know, why you should sign up for that course, for example, I can easily exclude anybody who's already signed up for that course so that I don't waste people's time with that stuff. So having everything integrated like this in one place makes a huge difference, okay? Then I have uh, a couple other things, the content creation toolbox. This, in my opinion, gives you everything you need to produce a piece of content, whether it's an article on your blog or a lesson, it's gonna show you how to put that all together. And then of course, there's this Camtasia course, advanced video editing. Don't let the word advanced scare you. Any of you here, I'm sure is smart enough that you can go through this course, go through it nice and slow, watch a bit of the video, practice what you're learning. And I guarantee you, you'll get it. And there's nothing in this that's so complicated. If you can understand how to do accounting, you can understand how to edit a video in Camtasia. Granted, it's a very different kind of skill, but it's not rocket science. So um, so uh, if I use Square for my website, can I still use, you could, but it would be it would be a heavy price to pay to use Kajabi just for email marketing. You know, you would really want to make it your website platform at that point. Plus, if you're using Square for your website you, and, and then Kajabi just for email, you wouldn't have that connection of the centralized data that I was referring to. Um, so these are my courses that really delve into the area of marketing. What you may notice I don't have specifically is a course that teaches you like, here's how to get clients. We've gone over that kind of stuff in 97 and up quite a bit. Every time I touch on the accounting for a particular industry, I'll often put on the heels of that a call that talks about how to get clients for that industry, right? 
but I don't have a course that focuses on like how to go on LinkedIn and go get clients, right? There's a lot of other programs out there that teach you that. It's not something I have been inclined to delve into myself. Um, so going back up to the website, uh, again, under the Galaxy, I have two links here. One is to join the community. The other is to access the community once you've joined. That's the distinction. Then we have a page here that you can click on and go through that talks about all the different communities we have. Because as I said, we have courses that have their own communities attached to them, such as the e-commerce. It is $37 a month there. That confirms it. Um, and then here are the other like bulletproof courses that each have their own community. Again, e-commerce, uh, the original mastery course, and then the real estate broker course. So that's the um, updates on the community. Uh, what else did I want to talk about here? Uh, courses training showed you the Galaxy. Uh, I've got resources up here that I've been putting together. That's just kind of, for me, it's just kind of fun. First of all, I have an affiliate program. So if you love my courses and you feel very comfortable recommending my courses, you might as well get paid. I pay out quarterly, right, Donna? I, and I actually pay. I don't promise to pay and then and then bail out on it. I actually do run the numbers and pay out all the affiliates every quarter, guaranteed. Um, I've start, started to put together my own little reading list here in case you're curious to know what am I reading. So these are some of the books I'm currently, I mentioned Think and Grow Rich. There's Ron Baker's Time's Up. If you haven't read this, you've got to read this. If you want a real good look into the future of what the accounting business model should look like, this is the roadmap for how to get there. Some other things I'm looking at and reading. Um, I'm watching the chat. Nobody's going to let me retire. It's going to be like, a, what was it, Scarface? Once I try to get out, they pull me back in. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, so that's the resources, the reading list. And then I have Nerd Recommends. A lot of people ask me questions like, what product do you use for this or that, right? So these are my like top choices right now, Notion, Kajabi, and Keeper. Um, these are some accounting apps that I absolutely love. If you do factoring, then you've got to use fun through it integrates beautifully with QuickBooks online. It's not something that's widely needed, but for those that need it to me, this is the only choice, right? Genius sheets and keeper again, uh, QuickBooks waypoint. If you need inventory management and dear systems, these are the guys to help you with the setup and implementation of dear systems. Content production, Kajabi rev.com is what I'm using to get captions done on every video. Capital one. We recorded a podcast, I don't recall if it's been published yet, talking about why Josh and I absolutely love Capital One. There's Nimble My CRM, Airtable for anything database related, for project management. There's Dynalist, Lysio, of course, Google Workspace for productivity. And then um, I've got Notion down here again, just under the heading of apps and services. So, you know, browse, this is obviously something I'm going to be updating as far as Nerd recommends. What I haven't put in there yet are uh, like hardware, like people ask me what headset I'm using and that kind of stuff. So I'm planning on getting uh, all of that kind of loaded up in here, um, trying to see if I can get set up with an Amazon affiliate program. Again, they've kicked me out a couple of times because I didn't put things where they wanted them. So, um, but either way, I'll put it out there, affiliate or not. At the end of the day, that's just an added benefit. I don't really care if I don't get paid, I'm still gonna tell you what I love, right? So existing courses, right? Uh, first, e-commerce course. Uh, as I mentioned, I've, I've actually got all but five lessons fully published. Um, I've held off on ShipStation and Square because I've been trying unsuccessfully to get good data to work with in those apps so I can properly demonstrate them. Uh, I don't have any clients in these apps. So, you know, some people were helpful and sent me some screenshots and, and reports that they pulled. But it, it just, as I looked at it, I was like, I don't feel like there's enough here for me to produce a useful lesson for people. So that's why I've held off on those. Um, I did recently release a one-hour lesson on how to import Shopify sales with SaaSant. It's a comprehensive lesson that shows you how to actually first import your inventory items in case you need to. You know, if you're really just starting out getting things set up, first you got to have the inventory parts imported before you can import the sales, of course. And then I show you how to import the sales. Uh, this leaves PayPal and Stripe. Um, I'm think I'm ready to go on one of those two. I, I thought I'd actually published it. So sure, sure enough, this week, one of those two is going to get done. And the other one, probably by next week. Um, sales tax is covered in the e-commerce course, or it may be one of the few last lessons that I haven't done yet. We did cover it in one of our live calls, and that recording is up uh, in the course already. That's from like a year ago or more when I originally launched it. Um, so if you're running an e-commerce business, um, you know by the time your sales hit QuickBooks Online, it's too late really to calculate sales tax. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, what about using QuickBooks Online for sales tax? It's not really useful to me to do that because 
the sales tax needs to be calculated and collected at the point of sale, which is going to be in your sales channel. So you really, if anything, are going to need an app like Avalara or TaxJar to integrate with your sales channel so that that all gets handled properly long before the data hits QuickBooks Online. Okay. Um, but I do want you to understand the accounting flow. So that's why I'm still going to do a lesson and kind of walk you through how the sales tax module works and what it looks like in QuickBooks Online. But like I said, and I'm going to make it clear in the lesson, this is not the way to do it for an e-commerce company. You just can't. It's like I said, it's too late. You'd end up eating all the sales tax. Um, and like I said, there are appendices that I haven't rolled out yet, two of which are, um, and I've had exactly one person express an interest even, but I have modules already live in the course that talk to you about how to use an Airtable system that I've built to track inventory in case you just don't want to do it in QuickBooks Online and you don't want to go to the expense of an app like Deer Systems, which in my opinion isn't actually all that expensive for everything you get. But it's still, you're, you know, it's going to be minimum 500 a month because it's a very robust um, need and a very robust package. So I have Airtable systems you can use. Uh, and there were two, um, what do you call it? There were two lessons that I'm sort of, I've laid out in the appendices that will show you how to create this in Airtable. So it's more about teaching you how to use Airtable than anything about e-commerce. Like I said, I had exactly one person express an interest. So being frankly a little underwhelmed by that, I'm guessing most people don't really care. So uh, eventually I'll get to it, but it's obviously not a priority given that. So the, this course, by the way, um, is so this course in the Bulletproof Bookkeeping Mastery were originally laid out to be $2,500 courses, you know, 2,497. Over time, I dropped the, the rates. Um, what happened was, and I'll be honest with you, I'll be very transparent. Um, I found that when they were, they were priced at 2,500 and I would run a coupon code for like 25% off, which gets it down to just under 2,000, <clears throat> people would sign up like crazy. Then it would go back to 2,500 and you know, the signups will be much fewer and further between. So I said, well, let me just permanently drop the price. Well, when I did that, it was the same thing. Like nobody was really signing up except when I ran a promotion. So at this point, what I decided is I'm going to bring it back to the original price of 2,500. Uh, I'm the first one to teach all of you in many cases, not to cheapen the value of your services by discounting it too much. And I'm guilty of making that exact mistake. So um, effective this Friday, both of these courses are going up to 2,497. Uh, so if you want to get them for 1997, this is the week to do it because then the price is going to go up and I don't think I'm going to be offering any more coupon codes. If anything, I'm just going to be adding a ton of value into these courses, right? And what that's going to look like, I'm going to go over in a couple of minutes because I've outlined for the existing courses, uh, especially Bulletproof Bookkeeping Mastery, a bunch of content I'm going to be adding to it, to it and also updating existing content. So uh, April 7th, the prices of those two courses are going up. Um, another course that I have that I feel like not enough people have signed up for and really should, you want to get into strategic, you want to get into advisory. Um, this is the course for you. Um, it really gives you the blueprint. Apart from doing the um, the CFO program, uh, where did it go? Let's try that again. Okay, everybody can see this business valuation and analytics on my screen. Bueller. Okay, good. So this course is broken up into a few sections. Overview of analytics and business valuation, analytics and ratio analysis, and then business valuation. So if I dive into each of these sections here, how to increase equity in yours or your client's business, business valuation, what is your company worth? This goes through my approach at how to value a company, right? It's sort of like my opinion, I guess you could say. Uh, if I click into this lesson, then from here, I can easily get to the next category. And so now we have ratio types. So this lesson is a deep dive on ratio types that fall into five major categories, growth, financial strength, management, effectiveness, profitability, and efficiency. Now, by the way, people who sign up for Bulletproof CFO get this course included because it's such an important part of providing CFO services. This is the stuff that in my opinion, you know, any CFO needs to be able to do in their sleep, right? So it teaches you growth rate, growth rates, and you know all the different ratios within these rate, uh, within these um, categories, and how to calculate them and how to interpret them, right? What means it's good? What means it's bad? Sometimes going up is good. Sometimes going down is good. And the reality is, the um, 
you know, the analysis itself is useless unless you have something to compare it to. A lot of people want to compare these things to industry standards. I hate that idea. I would rather compare you today to you yesterday to where you want to be tomorrow with these ratios. To me, that's the most useful and effective way of utilizing these kind of ratios. Um, so Tracy, the two courses so far that I'm increasing prices on are the e-commerce and the original Bulletproof Bookkeeping Mastery. Those two courses are going up in price on Friday. Um, so, and this is a course, I'm not planning on increasing the price of this course. This course alone, if I remember correctly, is $747 for the whole course. And so here's the different lessons on each of the ratios within each of the categories, right? Uh, under management effectiveness, we have return on assets and what does that mean and so on and so forth. Uh, next category, how to calculate that, how do they calculate valuation on Shark Tank? And in this one, I, I think it's in the next lesson, yeah, where you'll get access to a template that I've created that helps you kind of start off doing what they do in the Shark Tank. So, you know, they come in and they say, hey, um, I want you to, uh, I want an investment of $500,000 and I'll give away 75% of my business for that amount. This calculates what that valuation looks like, right? So using simpler numbers, if I say I want an investment of 100,000 and I'm gonna give away 25% of my company, that's a $400,000 valuation. And then the next tab is this sort of mini financial model where you can put in, you know, estimates, it's of growth rate, your basic high level p &L numbers, and it will calculate what their investment looks like and then their cumulative ROI. So you can kind of determine at what point this becomes sort of profitable for the investor. In this case, because of the numbers I just changed it to, it's uh, immediately profitable. So let's back up, back to here. That's still already, there it goes. So they're kind of in losses here or they haven't made back their investment until we get to almost there, right here. So this is the point in the timeline where they cross over based on what our projected ROIs are um, into where they've recouped their investment and now everything is, you know, sort of profit from that point forward. So, and the, this was inspired one night while I was sitting there watching the show Shark Tank. So that's a business valuation course. And like I said, I think it's probably my fault because I don't make it clear enough to enough people what, um, you know, what's in store in this course. So, so that's that. Um, we're actually running out of time already. So let me move along. So Bulletproof Bookkeeping Mastery. Here's what's coming as far as uh, updates to the course. So um, under the section of sales customers, inventory and accounts receivable, I am gonna add a sales tax module to that course. So I'm gonna teach you sales taxes there. Um, also customer deposits, how to handle customer deposits. I've got a couple of free videos on YouTube that are years old now, but I don't feel I've ever put anything out there that truly covered the whole process and cycled properly. So the first part is where I actually received the deposit from the customer and how I handle that. And then the second part, which will be a separate lesson is now that it's time to invoice the, the client and apply that deposit, You know, how do we handle the accounting for that? And of course, there's a number of ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the way that I feel is most bulletproof, right? Under expenses, vendors, and accounts payable, I'm going to put in a detailed lesson on prepaid expenses and amortization. And you're going to get a very, very detailed template that works beautifully for laying it all out when I've paid for the prepaid, what the uh, time period is, whether it's 12 months or whatever. And then the template will calculate everything for you. The, um, the of, of course, the monthly amortization and the uh, net asset value uh, each month at the end after you've booked that amortization. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to do a lesson on 1099s. I sort of just hate 1099s. I feel like they're such a waste of time for all of us, but I know we got to do them. So I've, I avoid it because just the subject of it puts me to sleep, but I realize I need to do it. I need to show people and I'll show you how I do it. I use track 1099. I do not use QuickBooks online. And of course I'll get into why that is and why at this point I, I wouldn't even think about using QuickBooks online to, to run the 1099s. Uh, under simple job costing, uh, I have job costing with customers and then job costing with projects. I just never done that. I felt it was really more of an intermediate level thing, but at this point, I'm not going to do a separate intermediate course. So I'm just going to roll it into the existing course. And uh, a few people emailed me asking me this question. So anytime I'm adding stuff to these courses, of course, it's going to be available to people who are already in the course. I would never do that to you and say, oh, you got to pay extra for that. You know, the whole point is, no, if, once you're in the course, you're in. If I'm adding stuff to the course, it's yours. It's included. It's part of the deal. Okay. Uh, so that's the updates to 
to that. Um, I mentioned the real estate broker and agent course. I'm going to add on a module for agents. I'm going to make some changes on the broker side that I think will make things crystal clear, you know, better than I've done. I, I got some feedback from one guy who ended up asking for a refund and I considered what he had said to me and I felt he was right that the way I laid out some of the material was uh, confusing, especially because he wasn't an accountant. He was a real estate broker himself. And so I, I, I took his uh, feedback into consideration and, uh, and I'm gonna make some changes based on that feedback. Uh, so that brings us to new courses. Oh, and the Bulletproof Bookkeeping course, once I've added the real estate module, which I expect will be early June, then that course is gonna double in price from let's just roundly say 750 to 1500. You know, I always do like the, you know, like 747 to 1497, whatever that works out to be. But uh, so that one we've got some time on, but of course, if you signed up today, you will get the uh, added material included. It's just gonna, you're gonna wake up one day and log in and there it's gonna be. And of course I'll send an email blast out, obviously letting everybody know, hey, I just went live with the agents part and so on and so forth. So here's what's coming out this week for sure. There's probably gonna be more than this, but I don't wanna overpromise, right? One mistake I'll admit I made with e-commerce was I, I rolled it out and I left a lot of, uh, hence the question I got today, uh, I left a lot of it unpublished and I've been publishing it little by little over the months since, um, you know, which leaves people wondering, hey, is he ever gonna get this course done? And the answer is yes, I'm, like I said, five lessons away. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna wait till the course is completely published, um, at least insofar as whatever my original outline plan is. And I'm not gonna release courses until I'm there. Then if anything, I might, look for opportunities to add value by adding more lessons. And again, that's always going to be included. But one of the things I'm really excited about that I'm going to be uh, launching uh, later this year is what I'm calling my Bulletproof Notion project. So let me um, bring this up on another screen just to make sure I don't reveal anything sort of private or confidential because my whole business and personal life and everything's like in Notion right now. <laughs> um, so let's go here and I'll do that and bring it on to my screen. So I'm all in with Notion. I'm, I, I, I abandoned ClickUp. I don't need ClickUp anymore. I have developed processes to do everything in Notion. And I've been studying some books. You might've seen one of them flash on my screen when I went over my recommended reading earlier. Um, one of which talks about quote unquote group productivity, which looks very different than individual productivity. And so I'm taking a lot of what I'm learning from that book and infusing it into what I'm laying out in this project. And I'll just show you quickly what this is. It looks like I'm just scratching the surface building it, which is why I don't plan on releasing this till much later this year. But it, think of this, this notion for life page as the master template that's gonna be chock full of a ton of templates, okay? So if I go into here, and for example, I mentioned I would talk about the journal. I don't have time to get too deep into that. Um, so I'll touch on that quickly in a minute. But first, let's say I go to my Bulletproof CRM. So here is, I just put myself in here as an example. So here's the CRM. I've listed myself and all of my contact information. If I click to open this up and I, on the company here, I click to Acme Inc. Right, and that takes me over to Acme Inc's page, which is where I keep track of all the work I'm doing for Acme Inc. Now you have an example here where it's meeting notes for uh, and you see how you can dynamically tag dates, even in the title of a note, right? And I have a template here. This is one of the templates for, you know, how to keep meeting notes, right? And how to keep track of whatever was discussed at the meeting. So this is using the relational database aspect of Notion, where I've got two databases, one for the contact, one for what we're calling work management. It's different than project management right? A lot of your tools like Asana and whatever, these are project management tools, which fail to take into account that I have a lot of one-off tasks that aren't part of a project. So I love this broader term of work management. It's one of the things I took out of this book that I'm studying, right? And then going through here, I've got the, the work area broken down into the three major areas that everything all of us do, you know, have to deal with communications. There's the planning and work management, which you just saw an example of. If I click in here, that takes me into the same database. This is the beauty of Notion is it's geometric in nature. I can, you know, all the way around, I can, you know, link to things in different ways based on different ways I might want to access that thing. Okay, so, and then there's resources within this, we've got human resources and then process design, which is where you create your SOPs, where you document your processes. And these obviously haven't been developed yet, 
But you know, we're going to talk about some apps that you can use for that. And I'm going to talk about how you can actually use Notion itself for that. But there's apps like Sweet Process and Process Street that will help you um, you know, do this kind of stuff. Right. So that's the uh, bulletproof Notion project in a very, very quick nutshell. The other big one that I plan on releasing uh, November of this year. So the plan release for Bulletproof Notion is September 4th. Plan release for uh, for uh, this next one is November 6th. And it's Bulletproof Bookkeeping Course with QuickBooks Online for property owners and flippers. This has been a much anticipated course. Um, uh, yes, Tracy, the, the idea of what I showed you in that work management area is in that client's page, in that uh, list, that database is um, where I would list each task that I ever have to do. And I can do I can do a task, I can do a project. That's the thing about Notion, it's incredibly flexible. So I can create a page, for example, called banking. And in there I'd list all the bank accounts whose feeds I have to update weekly and so on and so forth, right? Um, so just going back to the chat and looking at some of the questions. Um, so the dates for upcoming courses again, again, Bulletproof Notion is gonna be September 4th. Property Owners and Flippers is November 6th. This is a big and long anticipated one. Originally, I'd schedule it for release earlier, but like I said, I don't wanna release it until it's completely done. And uh, that's why I'm giving myself till November to make sure the whole thing is ready for prime time so that when I do the launch, you can rest assured that everything in that outline will be published the minute you sign up and you'll have access to it. So that's September 4th and November, for, for Bulletproof Notion, November 6th for property owners and flippers. And um, the real estate broker one I think I mentioned is uh, my plan is to release that on um, like June something, June 1st or ish, something around that. Uh, June 5th, there it is, found it in my outline. June 5th is the date for the real estate broker course updates. Uh, Prices for property owner. So the property owner is a major bulletproof bookkeeping course. The property owners and flippers. So that one's going to be priced at twenty four ninety seven. Um, but as always, I'll throw in a whole bunch of bonuses when we do the launch, which will look like other courses that are included. Um, the Notion course is also probably going to be. It's going to be a major course because it's going to be both the templates that I showed you, but also an actual course with lessons on how to do every little thing in Notion. So I plan on making it extremely robust, which means it's also going to, and it's a bulletproof course. So generally speaking, if it's in the bulletproof camp, it's going to be $2,497. That's kind of going to be my standard price for anything bulletproof. And what you can expect, of course, with that is a very, very robust course that's both wide and deep in terms of what it, uh, you know, uh, includes. So uh, any other questions? I know we're kind of over our time by a few minutes. I don't want to hold anybody hostage, but Happy to stick around and answer some more questions. Did I say I'm going to do a pull-proof course for property owners? Yes. Oh, so Greg, that's what you were referring to. <laughs> there it is. Yep. And yes, that's the other thing I'm going to be doing. Rather than discounting and devaluing my own courses, I will bundle courses to, you know, that logically weave together. Like even now, I have a bundle for both the um, property management course and the real estate broker course. A lot of people who want one want the other. So I have a bundle for those two courses now that you can take advantage of. Uh, and obviously when I increase the price of the related courses, then the bundle is gonna increase too. But the point being, anytime there's a bundle, you're gonna save a little money by taking advantage of the bundle. And that begs the question some people have, well, what if I already signed up for one of those courses and now I want the bundle? If it's like within a reasonable amount of time, and I know that's kind of subjective, then I'm, I, I've already done it for a few people where it was clear, like they bought one of the courses like a month ago and now they want the bundle. So of course I'll honor it and just prorate the difference and you know we'll get you taken care of that way. I'm, I'm not here to nickel and dime people. I just wanna you know sort of get and give fair value. Um, one of the questions that wasn't in the slideshow because I guess David, my uh, graphic guy, didn't uh, think it was necessary, but I actually wanted to answer it. The um, the uh, what do you call it? The, the question was something very broad and vague, like how do I make money, right? And so it just popped into my head that you know it sounds like you know maybe some people would think that's a, a kind of a silly or ridiculous question to ask, but I'm going to take it seriously and answer it for you because this is the kind of stuff I think about when I'm looking at these courses and pricing these courses and thinking about you know what I've put into them. The simple answer to that question actually is you make money by providing value, right? So if you think about something that you're doing and what value it has on it, and let's break it down in a very business model sense. 
So if I want to make a million dollars, one way to do that is by providing something that's worth a thousand dollars to a thousand people, right? And then you so you can kind of do the math from there. But that's how. So if you want to make a million dollars, you have to provide a million dollars worth of value. Then it's just a question of how does that break down, right? If in your bookkeeping practice you want to make, uh, you know, depending on where you're at, let's say you want to do a hundred thousand this year, then you have to do about eighty three thirty three and change each month in order to hit that goal. And in all honesty, what you'll what you probably should do if you haven't is sketch out a forecast of your own, at least on the revenue side that looks at, here's how many clients I need to get each month. Here's my average revenue per client, or you can break it down into the specific services and what you charge. And you're all good at math. So the math is easy, especially in a spreadsheet where you just take the number of clients you anticipate having times the rate you charge for each of the services those clients are in equals the total revenue for that month. And you sketch that out on a timeline. Right. And, and yes, I have videos that teach you this and the Bulletproof CFO has a whole lesson on how to sketch out your own model for your CFO services. And it actually shows you how you can quickly scale to as unbelievable as this might sound to some of you. It shows you a very realistic path for how you could get to 100,000 per month offering CFO services. And it's just based on getting so many new clients each week and assuming that on average, you're charging 2,500 a month, which is what you should be charging for CFO services at a minimum. Some people don't feel comfortable asking for that much who've been in my program. So it's funny, they'll ask me permission to charge less. And I'm like, look, if you have to start lower and fly under the radar to feel comfortable, then do it. And I always warn them, I say, I guarantee you, you're going to turn around at some point and say, I wish I had charged more. And so some people have started out charging like 1500 a month and they do that with one or two clients. And then they realize, and so the next new client, they're like, okay, I get it. I got to charge 2500 a month because it's very high value. You know what you're doing there. That's how you make money is by providing value. And the higher value you can provide, it's not about how many hours you spend providing it. It's about the, the value of what you're putting out there. So if my client can can make an extra hundred, two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year with the information I provide them because of the analysis that I'm doing and the information I'm giving them as their fractional CFO, what's that worth? Right? It's worth a heck of a lot more than fifteen hundred a month. I guarantee you that. And that's where the focus should be. Um, so sorry, I was, you know, it's funny. I was looking for the um, setting in Zoom. It's been forever since I've been in that, that, that deep into my Zoom website. So yeah, if you got an email with the post link, uh, post webinar link, it probably doesn't work. Um, the course catalog, what am I sharing, Greg? Help me out. So I don't, <clears throat> I don't know what your um, intention was, but it went to a link, um, um, a, what do you call it, link? A new .nerd Enterprises link. Oh, uh, so yeah, the old. So either way, the bottom line is this. I'm going to put the replay of this up yeah. in my Guide to the Galaxy blog. And in there, so I'll email you all and let you know when that's live. And then I will, uh, based on everything I've gone over, I'll include links to so you can review the course catalogs and you know review the courses on the site. Everything you need, I'll make sure is linked up in that article right in my blog. So Sweet. What's my take on crypto and Bitcoin? I don't know, stay away unless you have money to play with and you can afford to lose it all, <laughs> all right? Think of it as investing in foreign currency. That's seriously how I look at crypto or Bitcoin is it's foreign currency and it's volatile. And so don't put your life savings in it. If you have money to play with and speculate with, then just like you might speculate with stocks, you know, you can speculate with some Bitcoin and crypto. I stay away from it because, I mean, of course I understand it, but I don't understand it well enough to feel comfortable putting my money into it. So I don't have a dime in Bitcoin. Probably never will. So yes, there will be a recording. You might've heard that by the time I said that before I saw the question. All right, cool. Well, if there's no more questions then I will let everyone go. And if you are subscribed to my list, which I believe all of you are, because that's probably how you got here, then you'll be getting a series of emails like the one you got this morning reminding you that you have until Friday if you want to take advantage of these courses before the price goes up on Friday. So you have till like midnight on Thursday. Thank you all for coming. I'm so Thank excited. You. So many people were interested. Have a good one.
Somebody raised their hand. And I yeah, just... Heidi raised her hand. I guess we missed it, but I, I Sorry, saw her Heidi. questions in the chat. So. Sorry, Heidi. <laughs> Oh, she said it was an accident. All right. All right, I'm going to end this. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everyone, for showing up.